These are the top reasons that people quit the keto diet. Now, I'm not telling you these reasons just to get you to stay on the keto diet. I'm telling you these reasons because it's important to know. If you did quit the keto diet, you tried it and it wasn't for you, perhaps if you know the reasons why, you won't beat yourself up so much. But if you are doing the keto diet and you're starting to find yourself getting a little bit sick of it and just ready to quit and throw in the towel, then knowing these six things is going to make your life a little bit easier. Because if you can start to correct these things, which by the way, I'm going to give you solutions, you're going to be able to have a lifetime of success on the keto diet. So before you throw in the towel and say the keto diet sucks, let's talk about the top six reasons that people quit the keto diet. Hey, we've got new videos coming out almost every single day right now. So at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, you are going to see new videos coming out. So you need to make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that little bell icon and that's gonna allow you to turn on notifications. You'll get push notifications whenever I go live or post a new video. So you never miss a keto, fasting, or just general health beat. So let's go ahead and let's get right into it. Now the number one reason, in no particular order, is a lack of energy. People quit the ketogenic diet because they just don't have energy. And honestly, it's probably the one that I would hear the most. And if you go around and you ask people that tried Atkins or any kind of low carb diet, they'll say, I did good and I lost weight, but the energy was just starting to get to me. Well, the hard part is a lot of people will tell you that in order to get energy on a keto diet, you should be increasing your fats. Now, in theory, that makes sense, right? Okay, we are creating energy from fat, so more fat equals more energy. Well, no, I mean, that makes sense, but when you think about it, food in general is energy. Does that just mean that more food creates more energy? No, a lot of times it can make us more lethargic. You see, fats aren't the easiest things to digest. And quite frankly, when you get on a ketogenic diet, your body is getting used to using fat for fuel, and you generally have more than enough fat on your body to provide it with energy. I'm a pretty lean person as is, and I have more than enough fuel to probably last me for weeks, if not even months, without eating a bunch of fat. Okay, so we don't need to be cramming fats down our throat. What we do need to do if we're low on energy is quite frankly, get more protein in. Now this isn't a push for animal products or anything. Do whatever you want. If you wanna eat steak, eat steak. If you wanna eat chicken, eat chicken. If you wanna eat pea protein, eat pea protein. We just, chances are, need more protein simply because our recovery isn't what it used to be. See, on the ketogenic diet, you're not getting that glycogen resynthesis after a workout or anything. You're not getting the typical carbohydrates that would have come into your body and helped the recovery system. So you're relying on protein. And a lot of times you're just not getting enough protein either because you're afraid that excess protein is gonna kick you out of keto or you're just concentrating too much on getting more fats in. Whereas I would back off the fats a little bit and increase protein a bit more so you have more recovery. The other thing is that protein will convert to carbohydrates but not to kick you out of keto. It'll convert to carbohydrates to help you with recovery if needed. And it's a demand driven process. So what that means is that you're only going to need carbohydrates created from protein if your body needs it. And if you're just drained and you're trying to recover, your body might need that. So give it a little more protein and trust me, it'll make a difference. The number two reason, which is a very common one, and quite frankly, one of the reasons that I quit one time way back when, was depression. Ketogenic diets can make you depressed they can actually affect your mood. And it's not some hogwash, fairy tale, weird nonsense, witch doctor stuff. No, this is the real deal. Okay, it has to do with tryptophan. So tryptophan, we all know of as just like the amino acid that makes you sleepy around Thanksgiving. All right, well, tryptophan is a lot more powerful than that. You see, tryptophan turns into niacin and niacin ultimately helps produce serotonin. So without tryptophan, we don't produce a lot of serotonin, which is what is the feel good neurotransmitter, what allows us to feel good. Now here's what happens. Tryptophan requires insulin to do its job right. And a lot of people will say that tryptophan needs insulin to get into the brain. It's actually kind of the opposite. Tryptophan requires insulin so that the insulin gets rid of the other amino acids so that it has no competition. You see, tryptophan is very interesting. Normally when you eat carbohydrates, all the amino acids that are in your bloodstream get pulled into a cell. Carbohydrates spike insulin, and that spike in insulin makes it so that the amino acids flow into the cell. Well, tryptophan needs that to happen because tryptophan is kind of selfish. Tryptophan only will go into the brain if it's exclusively available. So when we eat carbs, we spike our insulin, and the other amino acids go away, leaving a nice clear path exclusively for tryptophan to get into the brain. So tryptophan is kind of a spoiled brat. So if it doesn't have its carbs, then it doesn't do its job. So what that means is tryptophan isn't going into your brain, 
and it isn't turning into serotonin. So you're not getting that uplifting neurotransmitter boost that you would normally get from serotonin. How do you combat this? Because this is a real deal. People get depressed on it and then they have a hard time sleeping, right? Well, if you allocate just a few grams of carbs towards the evening time, it can make a big difference. It doesn't take much. You need a little insulin spike, like 15, 20 grams of carbs will do it. So just allocate your carbs towards the evening time and you won't get that depression as much and you'll be able to sleep a little bit better. Well, there's some really cool science coming out that's showing that specific fatty acids can actually allow tryptophan to go into the brain. So a study that was published in the Journal of Neuroscience found that the fatty acids octanoic and decanoic acid can increase tryptophan in the brain. And the cool thing is, these fatty acids are found in MCT oil. So if you have a little bit of MCT oil, you can increase tryptophan levels in your brain. So a lot of times if you get depressed, you start feeling that, just go with some MCT oil in a small amount, maybe 10 grams over the next three, four days, and it should correct itself a little bit, along with that insulin spike deal that I told you about with a little bit of carbohydrates, and you can combat the whole depression thing. Okay, it's, it's not the end of the world, and you can get through it. Okay, I got through it. Okay, the third thing, is going to be eating all the wrong fats for too long a time. Okay, it's the omega-3, omega-6 imbalance. I sound like a broken record. I'm always touting omega-3s, okay? We need a better amount of omega-3s than, than we have omega-6s. We need more omega-3s. Now, when we go on a keto diet, we don't really know what we're doing. We load up on a bunch of bacon, we load up on a bunch of cheeses, we load up on a bunch of lower quality fats, and our omega-6 profiles go through the roof. Now, at first, this doesn't cause much of a problem, but then 30 days later, 60 days later, 90 days later, it does. Because at that point, then you have too much omega-6s that have built up in your body, and they're starting to supersede the omega-3s. Now, omega-6s are extremely inflammatory. Now, hear me out on this. Omega-6s are not bad, but when in abundance, when there's too much of them, that's when they become an issue. You see, generally speaking, the most common omega-6 is going to be linoleic acid. Linoleic acid converts into arachidonic acid, and arachidonic acid creates eicosanoids, which ultimately are pro-inflammatory. So they, they trigger inflammation when it needs to be triggered. But if we have too much, it triggers inflammation all the time. That's why people say that omega-3s are anti-inflammatory, because they counteract omega-6s. They're actually not even anti-inflammatory. They just counteract the pro-inflammatory side of omega-6s. So what the heck am I talking about? All I'm trying to say is that if you have omega-6s in the mix because you're eating tons of grain-fed meat and you're eating tons of bacon and tons of cheese, you need to be taking omega-3 supplements like crazy. Okay, you need to be taking like five or six grams of omega-3s per day or at least getting good quality meat in that can help you out. If you're starting to get depressed and feeling that, just like the last tip I gave you, omega-3s could be a big thing there. So you do need to be paying attention. Get your omega-3s in. This is a big, huge reason why people quit, okay? Now, I actually wanted to add one more thing to the depression piece, because it kind of ties in with the omega-3s in this whole piece too. If you find yourself getting depressed or too inflamed, if you just take a break and do some intermittent fasting for like one or two days per week, but add carbs at the end of your fast, it makes a big difference, okay? Because you're already in keto, and then you're gonna do a fast, you're gonna be at a net negative for your calories anyway. So you can get away with having a couple of carbs when you break your fast, like maybe 30, 40, 50, and at least get the serotonin spike that you need to feel better without the damage of having the carbs at that point in time. So that's just kind of a more advanced trick, but it does help a whole lot. Okay, the number four reason that people quit the keto diet or say the keto diet sucks is because they can't do it with their families. Okay, they have a hard time getting the family to get on board with eating keto. So maybe the husband is saying like, hey, I wanna do keto, I'm gonna eat my bacon, cheese, and this and that, and the wife is like, well, I'm eating kind of a, like a more vegan diet and like eating low fat, and this just doesn't work, and what are we supposed to feed the kids? Okay, that can be a big problem. You know, when my wife and I are on different diets, it's heck in our house, it's crazy. Like, what do we do, we cook separate dinners? So that's the thing is, People make the mistake that they need to be eating these ridiculously high fat meals that are like grotesque for people that aren't on the keto diet. You can make things work. For example, if my wife's not on keto and I am, I can still have a chicken thigh with some broccoli and maybe some cauliflower rice and something that tastes good and I'm just having a fattier cut of meat. Maybe I put a dollop of coconut oil or something or a little bit of avocado on the side of my meal while she's having the same kind of thing but without the added fats. It doesn't need to be, I'm having juicy, greasy ribs and you're having a salad. It does not need to be like that. It's a big deal and it will throw you off. Now, one of the things I also recommend and one of the reasons I'm a big fan of Kettle and Fire, they've now come out with what they call keto soups. And these keto soups 
are totally family friendly. They're not ridiculously high fat. They're just the right macronutrient profile for someone that's on the ketogenic diet, okay? But it ends up making it so that your whole family could eat it, okay? It's not something that's so purely keto that someone that's not keto wouldn't want to eat it. And it makes it so that family meals can happen again. That is really, really powerful. Because if we can bring the family back together, no one's feeling excluded. Plus, they taste really good. My personal favorite is the mushroom bisque. Honestly, this stuff is so creamy. It tastes like you're getting cream of mushroom soup from like a five-star restaurant. So this one utilizes button mushrooms, which by the way, have a really powerful effect when it comes down to estrogen modulation. They upregulate what's called MCF cells. So MCF7 cells actually go out and scavenge excess or estrogen in the body. So they stop the aromatization process. So if you have excess estrogen that's leading to like body fat accumulation in the hips and thighs and things like that, upregulation of MCF7 cells can help get rid of that issue. So for men and women that are having issues with estrogen dominance, this kind of soup is already perfect. So after you finish up this video, go ahead and check out the link down in the description. You can get a special discount on the Kettle and Fire Keto Soups. These guys are the world-renowned leaders in bone broth, and now they're making soup. So you can use code THOMASKETO, and it's gonna save you 20% off anyway. So cheaper than the grocery store, cheaper than Whole Foods, Sprouts, anywhere else online. All right, so the next reason that people quit the keto diet or say the keto diet sucks is because they get bored. I can only eat so much in the way of, you know, bacon and eggs. I can only eat so much in the way of this. I'm getting tired of making keto pizza. Okay, so you wouldn't get tired of eating different variations of other foods, but you're allowing yourself to get tired of different foods on keto. Well, first of all, you can get creative. And that's not gonna be my solution because that would be the lamest solution ever is get creative. Everyone says get creative. No, I'm gonna say get intentional with different things. Try and do some self-experimentation. If you've watched my channel for a while, then you probably know that I've done vegan keto experiments. I've done different kinds of fasting experiments on myself. I've done a carnivore diet experiment. And it's not because I'm sitting here trying to find the next perfect thing. It's because I wanna keep it fresh and I wanna do different things with my body. So get deliberate and intentional and try things. Try the keto diet with only meat. Try the keto diet in a vegan style. Try the keto diet eating specific things. Try it pescatarian, try Mediterranean. Have fun with it and try different things just like you would with any other diet. You say today, oh, I wanna have Mexican food or tomorrow I wanna have pizza in a regular diet. Why don't you go just worldly and try different ethnic cuisine with keto? I mean, just you can get creative and have a lot more fun with it, but more so get deliberate and have fun with self-experimentation. Carnivore diet is great for inflammation, so it might be fun to do that. The vegan keto diet was great when it came down just for mental function for me. I felt great doing that. So you just wanna try different things. And studies have consistently shown that getting outside the box and doing something different improves neuroplasticity and improves memory retention and all kinds of things. So little things like changing the route that you go to work, et cetera, that helps you out. But the same kind of thing applies with your diet. Do different things, but get deliberate. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is how to get through the social issues. Okay, I've talked to many people that have quit the keto diet because they said it was too difficult when they were traveling, too difficult when they would go into business luncheons or anything like that because they would feel weird or they'd feel judged. Well, the only thing that I have for you is a bit of advice from my worldly travels, right? My advice on that would be people appreciate you more for the discipline that you harness with a specific diet deep down than whatever they show on the surface with their judgment, okay? So I'll give you an example. If I walked into a business meeting and someone was gonna judge me because I was eating clean or I was eating keto, that judgment would purely be superficial because deep down they know this person's disciplined and this person is on their track and they're doing what they wanna do and it's probably gonna reflect in their work. So it's a cop out for yourself if you quit because of that. You're letting other people dictate what you do with your life because of some preconceived notion that you think they have and if they do have, it's their insecurity, not yours. Deep down, they know you're gonna get the job done because at the end of the day, they're looking at the bottom line. So if you're gonna deliver, then who the heck cares? So the business side is not an excuse. What about your friends? Okay, you wanna go out to the club and you wanna have some fun. You wanna go out to dinner and you wanna have some fun. You wanna go to Vegas, you wanna go to New York. You wanna, I wanna be able to eat, I wanna be able to enjoy. It's hard to socialize with my friends. Nothing says that you have to do keto forever. If you wanna take a couple days off and just enjoy it, enjoy it. And that's where intermittent fasting comes into play. 
take some time off with your hours of eating. Go 20 hours without eating so you get a little bit more flexibility. That way you're not getting totally kicked out of keto and then you go on a trip for a couple days and you come back at it. Okay, it's not the end of the world. The keto police aren't gonna throw you in keto jail. You can continue on and still have success and give yourself the mental break and probably the serotonin lift that quite frankly you needed. So anyhow, I know I went off on a little tangent there and a little rant, but that's the way it goes. I don't want people saying the keto diet sucks just because of their insecurities. Be strong, do what you wanna do, and take the proper measures that you need to take to get the most success inside and out. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.